good. So you got things moving back and forth inside this balloon. It's getting very hot. And all of a sudden, you take a pin and you pop that helium balloon. Let there be light. Everything that is space is completely bathed in high temperature radiation, bursting with light. Very quickly as the explosion dissipates, temperatures lower, particles start to bond and acquire mass, and the universe as we know it begins to form. Even understanding that much, scientists will use the LHC to learn what happened even earlier. We want to roll the tape back and look at that first nanosecond. One tenth of a uh, billions of seconds after the Big Bang. The very first nanosecond in time. That's 3,000 times earlier than we already know. What strange truths might that reveal? Weird things can happen at the atomic level. Weird things can happen at the atomic level. Things can be in roughly in two places at once. There is a chance that anything could happen at any time. Quantum mechanics says there's nothing solid. They say this, there's a chance that this ball could fall through this chair. They're not what we experience in everyday life. Anything can happen once, so you have to do it a lot of times. You put the ball in the chair a hundred trillion 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 times, and then it fell through ten times. Or a probability function. You could have some better sense of the probability than if it fell through once randomly. Yes, there is a chance of anything happening at any time. But reality is a function of probability. In the same way, there's probability for really strange things happening at the LHC. For example, you could produce a black hole. Well, if the LHC produces black holes, I'll tell you, physicists would be incredibly excited. It's unlikely, but there is a chance it could happen. A black hole. Wouldn't that be dangerous? Could it swallow up the Earth? A black hole produced at the LHC couldn't possibly swallow up the Earth. It would be the size of a proton. Smaller. However, 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 there is a good chance that the LHC will help us to understand which is dark matter. For the very first time in history, the LHC will likely produce signs of this nearly inobservable dark matter, which makes up the majority of the universe's mass. Dark matter is different than a black hole. Until the LHC turns on, dark matter will have remained completely elusive to us, though we've known it's there. What is dark matter? It's not atoms. It's the other stuff. Particles we've only speculated about until now. And we don't know what, what is made of. It would be gorgeous that we are going to produce the particle which constitute 25% of the universe. We call it dark matter. It has absolutely nothing to do with the dark side. Look up at the stars. All those bright things are a very small fraction of what is actually out there. The rest is mostly this invisible stuff, unrelated to the particles that we recognize. We call it dark matter. And right now, dark matter is passing through you at over 100,000 miles an hour. What we hope to produce at the LHC is the particle connected with that dark matter. That would move our understanding of the universe from 4% to 30% overnight, which is a pretty good, um, pretty good jump to take in one day. Darth Vader is still safe. The road to understanding dark matter first required really understanding what matter is. And that process couldn't have begun without something we now take for granted, called experimentation. A method brought to science by a man with a telescope. Galileo Galilei was one of the first modern scientists. He drops a uh, penny and a uh, big 50-pound weight. They fall the same speed. Galileo modernized the telescope, looked into the stars, to see what was actually out there. He measures to see how the world actually is made, you see. Uh, that's a, a different experimental method which we do today. And he brought the theory of atoms back. Though Galileo was on the right track, what he didn't know is that atoms and everything else are made of particles. More particles than he could have ever fathomed. The first glimpse of these particles within the atomic structure happened in the late 19th century when Ernest Rutherford discovered there was something inside there. He called it the nucleus. That's when particle physics truly began. Historically, the first important experiment of this sort would be by Rutherford, turn of the century. This thingy is uh, reproducing exactly what Rutherford did a hundred years ago. And he did an experiment where he took the most energetic particles of the day. The radioactive source is spitting out 
what's called alpha particles. So, for example, if I turn this thing so that the source is directly facing the detector, then I get lots of counts. If I turned it this way, and if atoms were made of jelly, then the alpha particles should pass right through and never get to the detector. Actually, about once every 20 or 30 minutes, you get an alpha particle. The radiation goes, hits the foil, but then bounces back and goes into the detector. Implying that there was hard cores, and therefore that the atom was really a solar system or something hard and something going around it, as opposed to being spread out like a jelly. Once this experiment was done, and really Rutherford interpreted it, we knew what the atom was. It was the first time we knew what the atom was. Though his discovery was gigantic, Rutherford used a relatively simple machine to look into the atomic structure. But we want to see what lies beyond that. For example, dark matter. Amazingly, we may finally get a glimpse of that invisible stuff at the LHC. How? By using an experiment like this. Welcome to Atlas. If the LHC is the world's largest microscope, Atlas is the world's most enormous lens, conceived to focus on the smallest particles in the universe. Its huge detectors are designed to examine nearly every kind of subatomic particle known to science, and some that are as yet unknown. Atlas sits at the southernmost part of the ring, and like the other CERN experiments, we hope it will unveil the underlying nature of everything. Atlas is a, a collider detector, it's a big instrument which is used to detect the products of a high energy collision between two, two protons. Fabiola is amazing. She's devoted the last 15 years of her life to the Atlas experiment, where her greatest hope is to find the key to, among other things, dark matter. We do have some pretty good theories that might uh, account for dark matter and we can test those with this machine. Now you have to imagine that these detectors are like uh, kind of giant digital camera which take pictures and they have a very high resolution and then you are able to reconstruct the details uh, of the picture and then uh, interpret it. Those pictures are taken by multiple layers of highly sophisticated particle detectors. Every particle collision at Atlas creates hundreds of additional particles that travel through the detector. The analysis of each particle's path and lifetime tells us what that first nanosecond looked like. And one of those particles holds special interest to Fabiola. There is one uh, called Neutralino, which has all the right features to match our present understanding of dark matter. The theory there is that the universe has lots of these particles that could account for dark matter. But it takes an amazing amount of technology to see them. The components of the detectors are uh, made of different materials which span from silicon, pixel, as small as 40 micron, a micron is a one millionth of a meter, to very big coils uh, which are 25 meter long and, uh, and weight 100 tons. The experiment is an engineering marvel. Here's just some of the massive services that you've got. I mean it may look a mess, but in actual fact every cable and pipe is numbered and we know it's routing. It's a big database, but you have to because if you want to track a faulty cable or something like that you need to know where it is and obviously when you get to the other end which may be a hundred meters away you want to know where it's got to go to the atlas detectors are capable of recording all of the 600 million collision events per second now if all that data was saved it would fill up every hard drive on the planet in one day so a sophisticated trigger system was created to analyze and save in real time 100 of the highest quality collision events out of the millions that happen every second, of every minute, of every hour, of every day. That means that every single month, the LHC will produce and analyze about one and a half million billion collisions. That's a number we call really big. It's one of those boggling physics numbers, similar to the relative size of a grain of sand. Take a a grain of sand, a single grain of sand. That single grain of sand has 20 billion billion molecules in it. Each molecule has 90 particles in it, electrons, neutrons, and protons. If you count all the particles in a single grain of sand, it's the same number, roughly, as all the sand in the Sahara Desert, down 10 feet. So that's a lot of particles. 
So compared to a proton, a grain of sand is really big.